What's up guys? This is the Brave Man and I am back to bring you to the next episode of My Empire Total War. Let's play as the Italian States. And in this episode we've got an excellent opportunity here to badly maul a Mughal army in North America. So are we going to take it? Absolutely we are. Let's take them on. So we know that the Mughals in North America have quite a significant presence. Um, some of the armies will be high, well, relatively high quality with proper Indian troops in, whereas a lot of them will be lower class troops recruited from the, the Americas themselves. There's lots of bowmen units, lots of auxiliaries. Um, so we've got to be aware that there's a chance that lots of their very impressive armies look more impressive than they actually are. So we just need to be ready to meet them Meet them on the battlefield, potentially multiple times, one after another. And be ready to push. This is actually quite a good frontline army. It hasn't got the cavalry to pursue, but it's got loads of infantry. Which is what we want. General in the centre. She might make my... Artillery, shoot, shrapnel sharp. Okay, the one on the right, that's a bad sh decision. Yeah, we've intercepted them, so they're going to have to come at us. It's half of their gunners, that's half of their gunners killed, and their gunners have routed. Good. So let's halt and fire at will again just to make sure they all pick different targets. Like you, I'm going to actually manually say you guys attack that unit there. You attack them, you guys attack the Kizilbashi that are coming in. But just enjoy this slaughter with artillery from range. Because we won't get it. Actually, you guys might try and knock out the horsemen. You can blast the Kizilbashi with shrapnel shot, so can you. Not the Kizilbashi, the Zemandari with shrapnel. Yeah, it's not as if my infantry is going to exactly give them a easy time. Danger close there. Uh, you guys just start firing on the center. That force is a bit, that unit's now a bit knackered. But there we go. So. Oh yeah, you can't can, artillery units just attack whoever's whoever's coming right at them. You can now switch to canister shot. Oh, the bowmen are still good targets. Yeah, lots of there are lots of bowmen units, so they they'll break and then they'll come back and break and come back and. Like these levy units here. They'll lose enough men to break and run, but they won't not to run completely off of the map. Not to exit the battle. If you want to engage my men in melee combat, they are more than welcome to. If they attempt to overwhelm us Soviet style, then that's that's a bad plan. These Sikh warriors aren't terrible, but they're against my marines. So they're against quite elite troops off the bat. Mm. 
their arm, their force has been reduced by a third before they've even made it to our lines. The AI is at least doing the smart thing and focusing on the guns, so when my guys disengage from the artillery, which they haven't done yet, which is weird. Yeah, so the levy is shattered on the flank. Okay, now you guys should have abandoned. Abandon the center. All my howitzers fire round shot. Aim at the general. Okay, now you guys have left the left your position. Yeah, the gunners routed. I expect I expected they probably would route in that instance. So you guys charge in. Push in. There we go. Just keep charging. If they want to get into these sorts of shenanigans, then they got to be ready. Although it does say that unit Kizilbashi, those units are winning. get you guys in to fight the bowmen as well just so that we can win on this flank and then bring all of our guys up like so you guys should do fine against that levy come on grenadiers and then Charge! There we go. That should cause them some upset. Maybe General's been struck off by a... a round shot from my artillery. everyone converge on that last unit. These men crash into the back of the this unit of Kizilbashi here. And these are the 19th Grenadiers. Yeah, part of the problem about not having cavalry is they can't capitalise in situations like this. I and mean, I do have my general. I meant to continue it, oh well. Still, there goes my general. Well, 600, we killed 4,000. Not bad. Even if 600 was more men than I would like, 4,000 is still a pretty good amount. So they're attempting to try and get around the flank, which isn't going to work, because we have another force recruited in Quebec. So Mughals have so many troops, even though he's even in... Um, southern India where, they, where the continent's pretty safe. Do I want to intercept this force? Absolutely I do. Leone Amoroso. Let's repel another Mughal army. We'd take these opportunities to do this sort of devastating damage um, while we civilly outnumber their troops. <laughs> when we civilly outnumber their troops. And we've also got that Significant, significant qualitative advantage. So these stacks of chaff aren't a problem individually. It's when there's lots of them that they could potentially overwhelm you unless you're fighting in a glorious um, bridge battle. So the terrain's not terrible, but I don't want to advance. So if I create a decent battery there, I 
You guys can hold fire. I can deploy my riflemen up front to jog ahead. Deploy three infantry on one flank. Deploy three infantry and some engineers on the other flank. Have a mixture of heavy cavalry and regiment of horse on each flank. With some howitzers dotted around firing from range. With my general in the centre, so my riflemen. And my artillery focus on their super annoying cavalry where possible. Some good damage there. But this is just to limit the damage against cavalry charges against my artillery. I mean, it's it's not a great field of view, actually, really. Now I realise where they've deployed. Stakes have been deployed to so pull my men back. Artillery open up. We own the right flank, so we should advance there. Bring the heavy cavalry in. against their cavalry. You guys stop firing. So howitzers focus the bulk of your payload on the troops coming in now. So we're going to win this cavalry fight. We'll take a few losses from these Zamandari horsemen at range. These are too fangy, they look kind of like semini. Are you men are gonna be ready to fire volleys into the bowmen? You guys get out of there, book it, book it off to the flanks, so then you guys open up as we run off to the flank, you guys open up, you guys open up. So we're avoiding a bit of fire, we've still got some bowmen to watch out for on the on the. Uh, this flank. So you go after the, the levy, heavy cavalry go after the Zamandari horsemen, you guys shrapnel shot the bejeez out of what's coming at you. You guys canister shot the, them. Drive up our cavalry on the left, because lots of bowmen. Let's then retarget our Howitzers. Because these are just bowmen. There's a unit of levy that might cause some problems. So we've won this battle on the right flank. They're shattered. You surround the horsemen. Oh! Look at that. Come on, General. Let's get you involved. Regiment of Horse, abandon whatever you're doing. Heavy Cavalry, deal with them. Your job, my friends, are to mow down... Oh god, they're actually gonna... Artillery attack ground there to attack this chunk of troops. Not attack the combat, because I don't want you to do that. Heavy cavalry attack the horsemen. Oh, 
There we go. So you've attack grounded behind the action rather than in it. Switch to round shot. Focus fire the general's bodyguard. No, but no cavalry. Don't get caught up in the guys that are still alive. That's what my general and my heavy cavalry are after. Good stuff. Then you guys all round shot the Tufangi. Or just stop firing in general. Actually, no. Round shot the general. And all my cavalry have different targets. Now it's just a load of artillery focusing on the general because they have no one left to attack. Ah, oh, there's some artillery. Ah, oh, the edge of the map's right here. Disappointing. We've only got 19 heavy cavalry, I would suspect that's down to a quick climb near miss let's push these troops up while at the same time stopping my field artillery from firing so my howitzers can focus on the general's bodyguard Hey, those bowmen came back. Charge them. Now you take out that artillery. Then once you've done that, you can charge on and attack the two fangy. To be honest, let's just speed up time. Because that infantry unit, yeah, they've broken. So we definitely want to continue. We're going to go on to speed two. And just keep hopping around. I mean, I should chase down the general's bodyguard. Because we didn't actually kill their general. There we go. So now you can go back to attacking the infantry. If you can actually kill them, otherwise it might bug out. Oh no, it did. You did kill that. Okay, all right, good. So you better go after them. If we we got a unit free to attack this two fangy unit here. Slice. So much damage. Got a whole bunch of units attacking this lone Dakiri right here. Although we're not going to be able to kill them all because they will manage to escape. But still, that's quite another major victory for our troops against the Mughal forces. We're knocking them back. Yeah, 333 lost and nearly, what, more than 4,000 of theirs lost. Back you go. Things you fight enough battles like that and you start to notice the swing in your favour. Before you know it, you've got the overwhelming advantage and then you just keep on pushing. So at some point we're going to have to attack India, which is going to be a... That, you want to talk about slogs, that's going to be a slog. Okay, let's start to just keep our spies running forward. 
Obviously, we're still fighting against Britain. Those three have moved up to there. You're going to fight against the British as well. Okay, so you're going to hold position. We're going to advance up to the farmland. So you're going to push through. No, no, no. Okay, all of you guys have all got your marching orders, roughly. Some of these units that are a bit smacked might take a bit of time. So Michele Contarini. You can leave Ankara. So let's get a couple of Dragoons. So then you, good sir, are going to march on down. Oh, march on down towards the Middle East. Good stuff. Obviously, we've still got these troops here. They're waiting for the invasion of India. So we've got a new town in Finland. So let's get you a craft workshop. Lots of enemy raids. Some good construction. Fleet arrives. Well, hey, two brand spanking new armies. Good stuff. So let's sail you down to Eastport where you can disembark. So now this army is covering the southern road north. We've got one army that can pursue, that can go around this direction to attack Mohammed Bora. We can upgrade you to a church school. The roads are still top notch. Gabriele, Gabri, Gabriele Le, Le Vecchia. Uh, push forward and just, I think that's, yeah, that's an auto resolve, alright. Chomp the last army there, so then you guys can replenish with Mario as reinforcement. Let's bring you back up to Fort Nashwak to keep them garrisoned because they're a bit unhappy. Good. So then the second army. Whoa, bit of a weird jump there. Let's get you up to Canada. So let's upgrade you to a seminary. Don't bother to repair any of these. There we go, Bartolomeo Spinelli. There's also up here. So this fleet can actually go and do stuff because we've now got a light galley to hold this position. So you get down to raid. Providence. We're recruiting a good fleet here. But let's get this stack to carry on pushing down the coast and raiding. Let's just cut them off. So many armies. Let's just split these armies, split these navies up. But I think we will see most of these armies are actually just not very good. Well, they're mostly levy and bowmen and handfuls of infantry. So we took care of the fleet. Lots of recruiting everywhere, to be honest. Um, right, so what we are going to want to do is try and get you guys to pull out. And then attack the British try and push them back through this gap. That's what we want to do. Sadly, we're only going to attack the first army here. But we need to push them back towards Georgia. We want to try and keep our front line homogenous. Yeah, keep the pressure. We've got the money to do it. 
And I think, well, we definitely do have the will to do it. <laughs> okay, so because it's a depleted army, let's create, let's have a bit more of a, build more of an offensive line rather than a defensive formation. Advance, surround, engulf. That's the name of the game. They might be the British, but their infantry. Oh, those are some great quick climb shots. <laughs> Thirty second of they're out of here. So drive these drive these men through the trees. There there's there are hidden units somewhere. Try push in literally that far. These units on the f out on the flank are going to pivot. Yeah, they have hidden units somewhere. It's probably where they're falling back to, is where they are, because they, they appreciate that that's their only real chance of survival, is to mash their whatever puny firepower they have together. So let's just get my field artillery to snipe their general. <laughs> there they are, they got hit by the quick climb. There's more of them there. Brave, but foolish, my friends. Retiree on moment. Pivot. These units on the flank. The mounted tribal auxiliary. They've hit the line, but they've they're broken immediately. Twenty eighth. <laughs> You've been cut down by vicious infantry fire. Yep, yeah, there we go. <laughs> So get you guys to attack ground there with your musk with your quick climb. They might fire short and do some damage, but to be honest, like look at that. She folks fire the general's bodyguard. Though most of the shots did land over there anyway. Yeah, they did get some hits. And don't worry, I'm completely aware of I've ordered all of my um, artillery to attack that general's bodyguard, which I've just charged Nino Boscovich into. Good. It was the enemy general that died. I thought, don't say it was my guy. Yeah, they fired off a... Well, the native Irregulars fired off a little volley. And then that was that. Let's get our general back out of there. Just to make sure there's no crazy... Crazy things going on. Let's continue to fight, even though... So that you can see there's one unit right here that's not actually routed. Speed up time. Let's assume I get my general around and out of the way. Stop our artillery fire from firing altogether. It was just that one unit that was still alive. Didn't really think they were going to be too much of a problem. Let's slaughter 
the British. Come on. Well, no more American infantry mercenaries for you. Ah, they're going to escape, aren't they? Well, my general should do some real good damage to the 55th Regiment of Foot, almost completely destroying it. Now you might get him. No. When they ran, when they drifted to the left, that sealed their fate. Like these guys trying to run away from my cavalry have sealed their fate by running away from the edge of the map. Yes. Good. So that's one army that hopefully should be pushed back towards Georgia. Good. So that's old Nino. Hello, my name is Nino. Oh, my agent got executed in Ardabil. But Bartolomeo got aggressive attacker. Good. And we've just got Fabiano Cast uh, Castelli, who was going to push and attack Lionel Mayhew to do the same job. Push them back through the gap. And we actually have a puckle gun in this army, which I never build because they're just rubbish. Uh, they don't have... They don't have the devastating long or short range firepower the regular artillery has. They're less useful than infantry and cavalry. So they're interesting, but they're just not as useful on the battlefield than pretty much every other unit type. Like if I drop a pucker gun down. Oh, because it's not unlimbered. If I unlimber it, it's... Like what? It's kind of halfway, part way between shrapnel and canister shot, ish maybe. Hmm. So let's get our artillery. We've got two units up on this hill. Let's have a solid core of infantry to advance up the middle. So have another gun up here. So I've done it again. I've gone to this habit of accidentally selecting everything. It's like, no, I don't want to do that. My puckle gun is going to try and advance, but I don't have a great confidence in it. So we've got Light Dragoons, Regiment of Horse on one flank, Curacier and Light Dragoons on the other flank. Bartolomeo, chill out in the centre. How it's a uh, and how it's a uh, open up on whomever you like. I said whoever you liked. I actually would have liked it to have been those cavalry units there rather than the artillery in the centre. Uh, I mean, actually, there's nowhere really good to put the puckle gun. But we're going to fire our muskets into this British cavalry that's making it to our line. And drop into squares. Carcass shot coming in. Puckle gun and limber. Now's your time to shine. Puckle gun, open up onto the ninth. <laughs> Weird looking things, aren't they? Although. <laughs> it's so rubbish. They had some quite ni neat sounding sounds to the battle you know rather than just volleys there is a pat 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 going on 
Hello, garrison guards. No. Don't use your little carbines. They are dangerous. Puckle guns, engage the 74th regiment. So you men reload, you're firing through the trees into the 74th. Ah, oh, some sound bugs, but look how weird they, weird they are. Do not, not a fan of puckle guns. Advance up my troops. Curacier hit the dragoons. Killed a few of my own guys with my Colonial Dragoons again. You men hit the 37th and do some good damage to them. Garrison guards have been killed. Let's get the howitzers to focus on more battlefield targets. We still have some of these units just sat in square because seemingly the enemy is unable to do anything about them. So you guys attack the General's Bodyguard, because we've managed to kill the 37th Regiment entirely. Uh, let's get one of these Quicklimers to work on the... to work on the this uh, American Infantry Unit in Square. Push up the hill to surround, get ready to surround and destroy. You guys clean up the native warrior auxiliary. Get you guys over here, start cleaning up these infantry units as they route. You clean up the garrison guards. This regiment of horse is still fighting against the this unit of garrison guards. I might actually get some infantry in to help out. My cuirassiers are enough to beat that infantry unit there. I mean, they're, they're, they're firing in every direction. And there we go. Folks on the garrison guards, you guys hit the Hessian line. You men come and attack the, the um, 59th. Stop our howitzers from firing. I feel the artillery can stop firing. Regiment of Horse, knock out the garrison guards, and then that's everyone chasing down a British Britisher. Sweet, let's continue. Uh, you chase down, chase down that line infantry unit. The garrison infantry guards are yours. Take out that garrison guards unit. You know, should really get the general involved. Just make sure everyone's busy. Okay, well, as... As busy as possible. Because, to be honest, lots of these units are uh, pretty depleted. And there's only so busy you can get killing a grand total of about 20 troops. Well, there is one unit back there that's going to get away. Chomp. Yeah, this unit actually took the unorthodox strategy of routing through our lines that survived. It says close victory. That wasn't a close victory. That was a pretty nice victory. And again, that should push them back through Avanti. towards Georgia. Good, so you guys can all replenish and hold the ground. Don't think we can leave Dagestan yet. Avanti. 
Minus six. Minus six becomes minus four. Siamo pronti. So let's recruit a pair of dragoons. So by the time the dragoons are ready, they might actually be ready to be left alone. Got a Persian agent here that's trying to kill my guys. Good, and Mano Rota can push against the Persians and you guys can leave Baghdad. So let's continue upgrading, let's upgrade you to a church school. Let's begin the recruitment of another army in Baghdad. Said Romano Balbi, said you're well placed to advance. You have a shipyard down here, you're churning out fourth rates like you should. We can repair these buildings here. Flavio. Combine the artillery from there, plus... Okay, let's lose one unit of colonial line. Let's get these two cavalry combined. So Flavio, you can also march over towards the new front. We've done the new town. Hop back up to the Americas. So you guys are ready to jump on to Punda. How is Punda actually looking? Get these two fourth rates over here to have a look. My god. But again, it's mostly not mostly mob units so no I want to I want to break these units apart please fairly sure you can Vito Spero you can leave the Windward Islands yes because they are they were formerly French so our Catholic heritage will do well Let's deposit our troops onto the island. Keep them together. Combine our fourth rates and then sail our fourth rates up to Mobile to continue our economic blockade against the Mughal Empire. And how much money is that? Okay, 23 thousand they're still earning from here so where's that actually coming from zero there zero there twenty three thousand here oh they got a trade route with a trade agreement with Mexico they do very well so then we shall take Simone Bo Bombieri, very good name, to raid the re to raid the trade, <laughs> raid the trade, uh, the trade route. So lots of our generals are gaining excellent thing, excellent um, retinues and traits, which will very much help them in the wars to come. You guys are all surplus to requirements. And you guys are going to go over to units that are recruiting stuff. Ankara is... So they're, they're one turn grumpy. One turn grumpy, that's not too bad. But let's start to... Keep recruiting. Start to keep recruit. Start to keep recruiting units. That makes sense. So then here up at Moscow. Yeah, just keep recruiting. 
These are more armies that are going to be pre that are preparing for the final attack on India. Good, so you really need one more unit of interesting infantry. Most of the time it will take far too long to get here, so it will just be a regular old line infantry for you. Nimbaldasare Bayano, you need... Again, it would be skirmishes or heavy infantry or something like that, but you're not really in a good position to get them. So it will be more infantry than this chap here. At least you need something different. You can get some cuirassier, you know, lancer guard and a regiment of horse. And so artillery. So march you up there as well. Let's recruit stuff to sit in these ports. This send a unit of dragoons over because you're no longer really needed for Corland. We've solved the fleets, we're raiding the trade routes. I think we want to take Guglielmo Zachariah and hit Kazi Rathor because he's trying to work his way into Canada from the north. So let's attack him as well. Because yeah, we we're, we're getting into a position where we're going to dominate Canada and we can cross over the river into America from the north. And all we have to do is hold, hold in um, Maine until our armies can drive, can each, well, not hold in Maine, but, you know, incrementally inch forward while our armies are making that sort of push. So we are going to want to advance down into the town. Let's get my regular infantry on the right flank. A big block of Swiss line to make up most of our holdings on the left flank. The skirmishers are going to stick near the town. Cavalry on each flank, general in the centre. Okay, so we're going to want to advance, although it looks like actually the enemy is also going to advance. So my howitzers need to, well, I would like them to quick climb the right flank, which is what you're already doing. My Swiss line are way over spec for the job they are going to do. You're going to focus fire that general's bodyguard. You're going to focus fire the same. You're going to focus fire that unit there. We are going to want to push. General's bodyguard is going to get over to the right flank to help out. So really, these guys need to push up a bit like that. Does mean my rangers aren't going to get the most use out of their brain. They're not going to get as much use out of their rifles as you think, as you would like, but it means they're going to be deadly accurate. Quick climbs slamming home. Keep pushing that flank. My cavalry sat here like a, a bit of a spectre. Ready to slam into the flank. 
when they are most upset. Actually, I might not even do that. Our, our um, musketry is doing a very good job. Yeah. Eh, hit that bowman unit if they're so inclined. Okay, quicklime's coming in, so we need to be aware that there is a a time pressure. Let's get my infantry on the move. So they can't shoot while my cavalry's storming in. New men hold fire. Get my cavalry out of there. Push you guys up. Push my cavalry around the flank. No. Uh. There we go. Cuirassier, slam into the bowman. You guys pivot. You guys... Attack that bowman unit. There we go. That right flank has been cut down. Quick climb definitely helps. The 64th Regiment have repositioned in face of these new threats. Cavalry's done some nice damage to that bow unit. Now they can charge on. This infantry can actually march all the way up to the rear to threaten the bows back there. The right flank has absolutely crumbled. You guys should have no trouble clearing out this unit of bowmen. Let's run my cavalry through into the centre to attack their mortars. Uh, yeah, you guys have charged the levy. Hopefully you can knock them out before my line reaches here. Hopefully. Well, you're upset. It's them that they're that the quick climb's attacking. Oh, that'll do it. So the new men turn around and attack that bowman in the rear. Do a bit of chasing down, but not too much. I'm going to march these guys through the centre. Let's run the guys on the right flank. Get these cuirassiers to charge the levee there. Let's get my infantry centre to try and bypass the levee. Same with my skirmishers. My cuirassier will have a real fun time with them. Let's try to keep this cavalry unit away from the bows, because that's why we've pushed up this unit of Swiss line, to help try dig them out of their entrenched positions. That's why I want you... I would like these skirmishers out on the flank to pressure these bowmen into abandoning their little position. Because they're sat there going, look at all this cover it gives us, isn't it lovely? And they're going, no it's not. Should you focus on them? These round firing, round shot firing howitzers aren't doing 
what we'd like them to do. There we go. They've abandoned their position. My men are going to gun down this artillery team. They seem to have hit points like the general, like the general units do. Like you have to do a certain amount of damage, but then it suddenly their uh, units just drop off massive, drop off dramatically. Keep pushing. Cavalry keep charging down the bowmen. Move my skirmishes up. Come out. You may as well chase down the levee. They're falling back to consolidate their position. We're not going to let them. These Kizilbashi are formed in the right block. You guys can reload. You should do some real good damage to these guys. My Swiss line should reload first. There we go. Good stuff. It's got a unit of bowmen up on the hill behind them. Yeah, but they've been taken out. Everyone bane at charge the last bow unit. Okay, then everyone everyone stop. I only I mainly just wanted to get my cavalry into the action. They're not likely to catch that unit there, so continue to uh, chase down and destroy. My general's finally going to get involved. I mean, I say that. It's absolutely my fault he's not involved. But yeah, now we've got a lot of cavalry. I mean, I want to kill them because we know, we know just how many men they have here in North America. The more we fight now, the more we potentially pull away from, you know, regions like Florida or South Carolina. We could potentially start landing troops there as well. But in order to do that, we do need to annihilate them on on the front to the north. Oh, look at this. Clever girl. Although he's there going, oh, oh, oh. Let's hope they don't catch me. Let's hope they don't catch me. But we've caught you. Not only have we caught you, the 13th, he's not even seen the guy that's going to get him. Oh, it's the officer. <laughs> nice. But that is a lovely, lovely win. Lost 300 men, he lost 3,600. These are the exchange ratios I can get behind. I'm going to move you guys up further to help support. Like I am aware, but you also need to declare war on the Huron at some point, but I would like to have a bit... I pretty much want to have these crossings, have this crossing secured, and have this section of the map closed off here. So I don't, I don't want to declare war on the Huron, 
And then the Moogles like start trespassing to go up to and attack me at Moo's factory. Gianfranco Adorno, Superior General. I mean, he's 844 and he's a incredibly, incredibly good general. Guglielmo Zachariah should be on, on his way soon. But yeah, that's quite a good set of results, I think, in the north. And we're driving east here. Armenia is just... With an Esto defender, he's just holding on. Holding on till reinforcements arrive. So let's hit end turn. Let's let everyone who needs to move on, move on. We've got multiple spies in Afghanistan, which we need to be aware of. <laughs> My recruited troops continue to trudge. So I'm waiting for them to pounce on those three armies I've got to the north of Ardabil, but it doesn't look like they're going to. Looks like they're going to bunker in Tbilisi. I don't know what the disaster was. I'm guessing they found a spy, I would guess. So they're evicting me from all of their ports. More armies are pushing up towards us at Maine. They are reorganising and <laughs> replenishing their armies. Ooh, do I want to intercept? Absolutely yes, but looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time to start exactly where the episode ended, pretty much. No, to end exactly where the episode started. Radio. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed.